So the other day I ran across the following internet meme claiming that a 19-year-old Egyptian woman had invented a new type of propulsion system based on quantum theory that could propel space probes and artificial satellites without using any fuel. Naturally, I was intrigued and immediately went looking for more details. I'm a physicist and I've been studying advanced propulsion systems for the past eight years and making videos on them. So to say the least, I was a bit excited when I saw this article. However, when I started reading the original article about this on digitaljournal.com written by a John Thomas Didymus, my excitement quickly turned to skepticism. There were two embedded YouTube videos on the page, both of which I remember seeing and investigating eight years ago. One on the dynamic Casimir effect in a cavity, and another John Hutchison video claiming to demonstrate zero-point energy, when in fact only exhibiting various electromagnetic effects without giving accurate descriptions on how others could reproduce those results. But the article contained the biggest red flag in the first sentence of paragraph 3, where it says, Mustafa believes it is possible to use vacuum energy fields to create propulsion and build spacecraft propulsion system that need little or no fuel to travel in space. First two words, Mustafa believes. Science is not about believing. Science is about testing and experimentally proving that something is real. So where are her experiments? The article mentions a few things about research, funding, inventions, and a patent that I also couldn't find any tangible evidence for. Yet it says nothing about her experiments, data, or lab papers, things which other physicists could use to replicate her work or under identical controlled settings. The only description I can find is that she used silicon plates placed a few micrometers apart. A micrometer or micron is 10 to the negative sixth meters. The Casimir effect produces about one atmosphere of pressure at approximately 10 nanometers, which is 10 to the negative eighth. So this is a hundred factors off on their, their scale in order to produce one atmosphere of pressure. Since the Casimir force increases when the plates are pushed closer together and decreases when they are pulled further apart, this would mean her experiment could not have generated more than one one hundredth of an atmosphere of pressure. So either the editor of this article got nano and micro mixed up, or her experiments would not be powerful enough to provide any significant lift as a propulsion system to be used on Earth. And even in space, it would be pretty weak. So I also tried to look for ways to contact the physics department at Sohag University so I could request an interview and technically detailed follow-up on the story. But I can't find any contact information on their website. Most of their pages and links are broken, including all their department pages, and their contact page only shows a picture of a map that does nothing when you click on it. No email, no physical mailing address, nothing. I was able to find where Sohag University is located in Egypt using Google Maps, and I plan on sending a letter of inquiry to their physics department in the next few days. I was able to track down the girl in this picture by cropping out the book that was apparently photoshopped in and doing a little Google image search on her face. There's an option that lets you upload a picture and Google uses matching software to find other similar pictures. Uh, there's also ways to get around that matching software, however. Uh, it's based on a pixel matrix uh, matching algorithm. So if you rotate the picture uh, any, any angle, um, it throws off the matrix and uh, you can't find the picture anymore. So a lot of people get around that by rotating the pictures in Photoshop and then reposting them, which appears that that may have happened here. They've rotated the image, put a Photoshop book over it, and uh, and uh, stole that image from someone and I was able to track down the person that they stole that from. Through some basic research I was able to discover that the girl in the picture was not an attractive young physicist but an attractive young fashion designer named Ayesha Mustafa with a slightly different spelling, a Y. I decided to contact Ayesha with an inquiry through her website Fashion Compassion over in the UK to see what she knew about the viral internet meme circulating with her picture on it. This was her response. Hi Jeremy, thanks for your email. I've been very concerned with the misuse of my picture on this story. This started from last year and I was notified by various friends and family and reported it to Facebook, 9gag, and various other platforms. It was taken down from few places, but now again it's all over the internet. I have nothing to do with this invention. I run a socially responsible fashion company that works to empower women and artisans from the developing world. 
We are relaunching the company with a new site in a month, and I am concerned that this will create confusion for my business. It would be great if you could clarify this in your article. Thanks, Aisha. So there you have it. Someone stole this pretty girl's picture, photoshopped a book into it, and created that meme in order to play off human nature to be more attracted to a pretty smiling girl than an average looking hijab girl, which can be found in this article from Inhabitat.com on the same story. Which leads me to the next question, is there even a real Aisha Mustafa from the Sohag University Physics Department? Is this her in this picture, uh, or is this all just one big internet hoax? Fortunately, the Aisha in this picture was uh, kind enough to reply to my inquiry and help me clarify some of the confusion currently going around the internet regarding the misuse of her picture. Aisha runs a clothing business which helps women in developing countries. Uh, I think she's an absolutely wonderful person and she de deserves a lot more respect uh, for the real woman behind this meme than, than the, uh, the, the falsehoods being perpetuated by people on the internet. Anyways, thank you all again. Uh, I'm still trying to track down the other Aisha Mustafa mentioned in these articles, if she actually exists, and there is any legitimacy to this story. I would like to arrange an interview with her or members of her physics department at Sohag University, yet so far leads have not been promising. Hopefully this video will attract some attention though, and help me get in contact with someone who can provide me with additional information regarding experiments, research papers, and patents uh, that are mentioned in this article, so I can do a follow-up, more, more thoroughly detailed technical follow-up on the story. I'm always interested in new ideas about propulsion physics, uh, but sadly neither the Casimir effect nor John Hutcherson's weird electrical effects are anything new, and both have been around for quite some time. Apparently this 19-year-old Egyptian girl just discovered things I found on the internet eight years ago. Assuming this wasn't all just an elaborate hoax, uh, which I assume it is, the original article was written by this Nigerian guy, Mr. Thomas Didymus, and I'm sorry to say, uh, but it has all the hallmarks of a hoax, or at best a misrepresentation of information by people who don't have a very good understanding of basic physics, momentum conservation, or kinematics, let alone intricate solid-state material properties derived from quantum physics, where they are off by a factor of 100 to 1,000 in their most basic measurement. Perhaps Aisha or Dr. Ahmed Fikri or someone from the Public Relations Department at Sohag University will see this video and find a way to get in touch with me. My email is thealienscientist at gmail.com or alienscientist at alienscientist.com or visit alienscientist.com on Facebook and send me a message there. I look forward to hearing from you. Anyways, if you'd like to see some real interesting propulsion technologies described in much clearer scientific and technical detail, check out some of my other videos like the one on beam propulsion technologies including ion drives and microwave phase conjugators, or my video on electrogravitics and the Thomas Townsend Brown effect where I talk about recently declassified B2 stealth bomber technology which used charged wing edges and nose cones to direct airflow around the craft to increase lift and minimize radar signatures. Uh, please note that Martin Tajmar of the European Space Agency performed some experiments of his own which refuted the French vacuum chamber experiments mentioned in that video. The bifeld brown effect is simply ion wind, I'm pretty sure, and not actually electrogravitic coupling effect. As some, like Dr. Paul Le Violette, author of Secrets of Anti-Gravity Propulsion and An Introduction to Subquantum Kinetics, have claimed, physics students out there are encouraged to try their own vacuum chamber experiments with this effect and if it doesn't work inside a vacuum, then it's not going to work in space. However, you could still build some pretty cool aircraft if you could generate enough ion wind to overcome the weight of the aircraft and the propulsion system driving it. This is essentially the system described in Paul E. Potter's book, Gravitational Manipulation of Dome Craft, where he talks about the onion drive, uh, creating a charged ionic plasma cloud around the craft to pull itself through the air like uh, I using ion wind. This type of ship would need to be ultra light uh, with a large surface area like a blimp or something it might work on. Uh, I also have a bunch of other videos about a gravitational effect that was observed in experiments with rotating superconductors that were electrically stimulated at a certain frequency. I also have an interview with Dr. Eugene Podklitnov on my channel who discovered this effect, as well as interviews with Frank Sinardzik who witnessed the NASA Advanced Propulsion Laboratory replications of this experiment and has his own very interesting theory on how it might work. I have been researching and making videos on advanced propulsion physics concepts for a while now. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in physics and with about eight years experience in this field. I encourage anyone out there who's interested in propulsion physics to check out the Space Technologies Applications International Forum at stafe2.org 
uh, link below in the description. Conference is uh, coming up the weekend of April 17th to 19th, 2014 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, this would be the place to go to talk with real scientists about real advanced space propulsion technology. Uh, if you're interested in that sort of stuff like I am, I'm, I unfortunately don't think I can afford the travel expenses to make it there this year and cover this event, but I strongly encourage others to check it out and keep me in the loop of what's happening uh, down there. You can register for the conference and submit papers to the scientific community there through their website. Uh, also check out the archives from the old SpaceIF conference uh, for some other interesting ideas in advanced uh, space propulsion physics. Links in the description below again. Also check out my website AlienScientist.com for lots of other interesting information. Uh, please send any topics or stories uh, you'd like me to take a look at. Stay skeptical, stay scientific, and always stay open to new ideas and information and look for ways to systematically confirm every single detail and allegation as I have attempted to do with the details in this story before you just believe something.